Douglas and I have been writing together since, I'm talking about Douglas Gibbs, yeah. since about 70, 71. That's when we started writing. And, uh, you know, we wrote this song called Sounds Like a Love Song um, for this artist we were dealing with by the name of Bobby Glenn. Mm -hmm. So that was on some little obscure label, you know. And then years and years and years and years later, I get a phone call from an attorney in New York. And he says, are you Ralph Johnson? I said, yeah. And he said, well, you've been sampled. And I was like, all right, so who sampled me? He says, Jay-Z. <laughs> now, okay, so that, see, so. What's going through I, your you know, head what, with so that? So I'm like, I'm like, okay, this cat is like pulling my string or something. Yeah. This can't be, you know. But Douglas and I had been writing and we did this thing. And then so I get a phone call from this attorney. You know, he says, okay, you've been sampled, blah, blah, blah. And immediately I said, okay, I put Rhonda on it. And we did all the paperwork and it turned out to be Song Cry. On Jay Z's Blueprint album. <laughs> you guys been working together that long, huh? Oh yeah. We go, oh, Ron wow. and I. We go back to the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think when you heard Song Cry? Well, you know, it's interesting because it's not really, honestly, it's not that I listen to a lot of rap and hip hop. Mm -hmm. So I was asking my friends, I was saying, like, tell me about this guy Jay Z. He's like, you kidding, Jay Z? <laughs> He's like, the biggest and I, thing and yeah, right. and rap like, started, like, huh? And I was like, really? He says, man. So, you know, I, I, uh, we were in Philadelphia, and I went to a record shop, and there was the CD, the blueprint. Mm -hmm. and sure enough, first thing I do is always check your credits. <laughs> make sure your credits are right. Make sure your name's somewhere right, on make there. Sure, <laughs> make sure your credits are right, man, because yeah. you don't want to, that's, that's where it starts. That's where the trouble starts if everything is not correct. It just... You know, next thing I know, I was looking at a video on Song Cry, you know, and I was like, wow, man, this is... So, yeah, it was it was a real cool moment for me to be sampled by Jay-Z. And, you know, that's one of his classic tunes, Song oh, Cry. It's, and he does it in his t on tour in his shows. It's, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that song because that's the song I actually first heard the sample. But not only that it, it's the song that I first heard the sample... It's my favorite song in the whole world. I mean, what? of all time. Song Cry is you my favorite song ever. Me. So I'm listening. I, I used to listen to this song over and over about maybe 15, 20 times a day. I mean, what? I just sit there and I'm such an awe about music. When I hear something that I like, I just right. listen and listen and listen right. and listen. Right. And, and the song tells a an incredible story yes and so i hear the sample in the background and, and it gives you some type of feel it, it brings an emotion out of you right okay yes so I, i'm thinking about my kids at this point when I, when i'm listening to this and um i had always been involved a little bit in music but i've never recorded or done anything professionally right. so it was just pretty much poetry to me yes so yes i'm listening to this song and i said you know what? i'm gonna write something for my children so the the music on that is just so powerful and, and the the sample is so overpowering it just brings such an emotion out of you so i start writing and writing and writing and writing and i finished this song and i thought one day i'm going to make this song one day i'm going to make this song happen one day it's going to come out and i, I just wanted to make something to share with my children. Just Absolutely. When I'm gone, they have that there. For, I mean, All right, I, so for the benefit of the interview, you should give them the name. The name of the song is that you did. Yes, yes. Give it to them. Okay. So um, I wanted to make this song for my children, and the title of the song is "Feel So Proud." Right. Um, featuring jokes, and what we did with the song was. We took the sample, made it our own, and I just poured out emotion. We went into the studio and we poured out emotion. Now, how long did it take you to do it once you got in the studio? About 30, 45 minutes. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I work pretty fast. Uh, I guess you work well, pretty when fast you when, you're that, when you're paying for it, right? Well, that and when you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to think. I, I recorded, well, I wrote the song about... 10 years ago, 10 or 11 Did you years really? ago. Yes. That so, long ago. Yeah, so it was just a, an obsession of mine. Right. Well, when um, 
I finally started looking up how we're going to go about doing this, I run into this problem that you, you have to get you sample gotta clear. Stuff. You got to clear stuff, right? You just can't just jump out. So I'm thinking. Start doing stuff. How the heck am I going to go about this? So I put it on the back burner for a long time. And not about a year ago, I started putting out music professionally. And it, it pretty much took off. I, I'm not a big star or anything, but, you know, I have millions of hits on YouTube and everything's going pretty good. So what? fast forward to this song. So I run yes. into this problem. And the I'm clearance, thinking, the clearance yes, issue. I'm thinking right. uh, you have to get a, it cleared. I, th I thought people can just use any song that and they start want. Running and with and, it. Yeah. Nah, not quite. So I put it to the back burner. I ended up in the studio. I'm making the song and I, I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to do this? And then I said, you know what? I'm just going to put it out for free and let the whole world have it because I never intended on making money. I never right. intended on doing anything professional. Right. Well, I, I'm a reader. I'm the type of person that wants to be educated on something before I do it. Absolutely. So I look up and I start reading what are the consequences if you put so out a song. So you're, you're, you're the person that when you get something new, you read the manual before you turn it on. Exactly. That's, that's how I am. Exactly. Some people just get something new and they... Hit the on and the power button and just start, <laughs> yeah. no, nah, man, I'll read a manual back and forth and then I'll say, okay, let's go. Let's go because on. you got to think, if something goes wrong, you got to right. take it all apart right. again. You Absolutely. might as well do it right the whole, the first time. Right. So I see, on, I'm reading on the internet and it says, well, you can put a song out for free, but the copyright owner still has the power to take it off of the internet. Yes. And for you to disperse the song. Right. So... I was just thinking to myself, let me take a shot at this. Let me see if this can. So you began come to, to try life. and track down the people that could get the clearance. Exactly. I'm looking on YouTube, and on um, on YouTube, when you expand um, all the information, it says publishing companies and yes. everything. So yes. I I seen exploration. I said, but this whole time I'm searching for Bobby Glenn. Ah, who's no longer with us. I'm exactly right, but. Uh, I'm searching for Bobby Glenn and searching and searching like, and it never said Bobby Glenn was the copyright owner or the publishing owner on this, because right? Because he wasn't. <laughs> so I'm like getting frustrated and frustrated. And so I, I'm part of ASCAP, right? Good. And um, So am I. I'm still, exactly, I'm still new to all of this. And I'm reading, it says, if you want to track down the publishing, uh, the publishing holder of the songs to look into ASCAP or BMI repertoire, so I logged into my ASCAP and I go in the repertoire and I'm looking for Bobby Glenn and still find nothing. And I said, you know what? I'm going to look up Sounds Like a Love Song. So I look up Sounds Like a Love Song, Ralph Johnson, Douglas Gibbs. And I was like, okay, maybe they made their own version of it. So on, on there, it shows all the songs that have been sampled and I've seen it on Song Cry. I've seen it on The Dreams and Keisha yeah, Cole's Keisha everything. Cole, yep. So I seen your two names throughout every single song. There must be something to it. I said this has to be those guys. Right. So I start sending email after email after email and I mean I sent emails till my fingers got tired and telling the story of how I wrote it a long time ago and wanted to share it with the world and I never got an email back. So one that day That is so interesting because I just I don't remember seeing those those emails. I don't know where they, were. I don't Maybe, know where they I, went. They were through the ASCAP website. I don't know if they were in, is still a valid email or something. Okay. So, I mean, I'm, when I wake up, I send an email on my way to work. When I get there, I would send an email. When I get home, I would send an email. Now, when did this email process start? Mm, probably about a month ago. Okay. Yeah, about a month ago. I, I recorded the song, and I recorded it, I believe, on a Sunday. And immediately after that, on Monday, I started sending emails out. And it went for a whole week. Next Monday, nothing happened. So I, I laid off on the emails once a day, once a day. Then I'm messaging you guys both. And I go and look in the repertoire again. And I look on the original song with Bobby Glenn. Yes. And for some reason, a call icon popped up, mm. a, a call button. So I said, eh, you never know. I pushed the call button, and the call got forwarded. I said, well, it's a call button to someone. Right. So instead of, and I don't know why, I had a rough 
the draft already made up. And I, I just said, you know what? I'm going to put this link. I'm going to put it on YouTube, put it on a private link, and I'm going to send it to this call right. button that I push. So I send a text message. But this time I didn't do a whole story Spiel on it. About it, right. I was just so tired at this point. I said, this is going to be my last time trying. If not, then it is what it is. I could just listen to it at home every right, time. Right. So I just said, if you're the copyright owner. By the way, it's called owner, a living room hit. <laughs> living room hit, yeah. Just so you'll know. I just put, if you're the copyright owner or if you own the rights to this song, I'm interested in clearing the sample. Can you please contact me back? And I sent a link. And I was at lunch at work that when I sent that. And um, I hear my email notifications going off, but I'm not allowed to check You're my phone allowed, at right. work. Right. So I, but I know they're my emails because it has a certain sound, a certain right. tone that goes off. Right. And nobody ever email, emails me. So I get off work and I look at my email and Rhonda had emailed me and said, I believe we... Uh, well, she said, we own the publishing to the song, the sample that you're trying to clear. Can you please give me a call? And she's telling me, Ralph Johnson forwarded us the message that you sent. And I'm like, okay. So at this point, I'm just, I don't know what to do. I sit in my truck for a little while. <laughs> and I'm like. I'm trying to figure out the next move. Like, what do I do? <laughs> you know? And, right. and so I call Rhonda. And uh, we start talking, and she tells me, Ralph Johnson sent me the email, and Ralph Johnson thinks it's a good song. And I was just sitting there like, I don't know who Ralph Johnson is, you know? Right. And she was like, Ralph Johnson from Earth, Wind, and Fire. When I heard Earth, Wind, and Fire, I was in my truck, and I had a water bottle, and I threw it at the floor like, no way. But she, I wasn't... <laughs> I really, she didn't hear me doing all this, right, and right. people are looking at me on the streets because I'm driving, and I'm like, no way, like, I got a contact, and then I was thinking, what does Earth, Wind, and Fire have to do with this song? I thought Bobby Glenn owned it, and Rhonda was like, no, that's just the person that performed the song. Right. He was only Ralph Johnson artist. and Douglas Gibbs wrote the song, and yes. I was like, yes. okay, now we're on to something. Yes. And... Here we are today after all of that, and I'm just so thankful that it's, it came to what it is right now. Well, like I said, you did a great job on it, man, and I love the message. It's a great message, man, about it's being It's a beautiful proud. message, isn't it? Yeah, man. You need, you know, I want to hear some more stuff you got. I think, I think pretty soon we'll be hearing a lot more, because okay. if Say This Happens... Then this motivates me to, like I said, it was just a hobby for me before, right? Right. And if, if this happens, I have countless poems and, and songs that I wrote, just never recorded them because right. you don't have any motivation. I live in the real world. I get up and work. I, I get up at three o'clock every day for work. Wow. I, I, I go to work, work eight to 12 to 14 hours a day. Right. I go home. I, I leave my house when it's nighttime. I get home when it's nighttime. Wow. Um, I hardly take weekends off. So right. I, I was never really motivated to make music because I didn't think it would ever go anywhere. But, I mean, here we are today, and if, if this works out the way I hope it's going to work out, then yes. I will be releasing a lot more, you know? 